All right, our second set of notes here deals with the other type of nervous tissue. We did basically the glial cells. Now we're going to talk about neurons. They're the main thing people think of when they think of nervous tissue cells. They're the ones that do things like thinking. So we think about them doing their own job, which is thinking. There are three basic parts to a neuron. You have a cell body, which is like we think of a normal cell, centralized body with a nucleus, all the other features, mitochondria, everything else in there, that are doing the main jobs of just being a, nerve, a regular cell. Then you have extensions. You have an axon. An axon is going to be one long extendable body that's going to do a particular task. And you have dendrites. Dendrites refer to branch-like or tree-like, so they're going to branch out and have different sort of arrangements we'll talk about. So the cell body is going to be that centralized body, main core. It's going to keep the cell alive, keep it functioning. The dendrites are going to receive information, whether it be from other neurons, or from receive receptor cells, such as the ones in the eyes that pick up, that pick up information like light, ones in your ears that pick up sound, and so forth and so on, ones that pick up touch in your skin. The axon is going to send the signal forward. That's why you only have one. The reason why you have just one axon is you don't want to complicate the signals. You want to receive as much information as possible, but then you're going to basically send one message. Four, you don't want five or six messages getting split going the wrong way and simply going where they're not supposed to. So axons are, from each cell are trying to send it where it's supposed to go. The axons may be extremely long. In the case of some in your leg, they may be almost two to three feet in length going down the entire length of the leg. So they could be up to a meter in length. So if you have a small cell in the lower back and it's receiving information that's trying to send it to your foot, it's going to do that. It's going to actually send a signal all the way down your leg to your foot to make it work. As a bundle, those axons may be bundled up and form what we call nerves. The myelin sheath is going to protect the axons. I'm not concerned about protecting the dendrites as much because they can kind of rearrange themselves, but I also want them to be free and open to pick up as much information as possible. I'm going to have to protect that axon since it's so long to make sure the signal goes where it's supposed to and is not interrupted. So myelin sheath is a fatty material that is going to protect that particular axon. The problem is, if you insulate it, it keeps it from being interfered from the outside, but also slows it down. So you have to sometimes kind of manipulate it a little bit to make it work a little bit more effective. Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system are the ones that are going to create this bond and sheath. Like a dendrocyte is going to do it in the central nervous system, but the rest of the body is most of the larger scale nerves we're used to. It's going to be the Schwann cells. One way I can deal with this concept of having a myelin sheath and having it go too slow by being completely insulated which is great for signal strength, but it's going to be poor for speed. I can make little gaps, and I can make it jump between the gaps of the signals to speed them up, so sort of make them go faster. Those gaps between the myelin sheath are called the nodes of Rondier. So they're going to be little small gaps that sit between the myelin sheath along the axon to help it speed up. We can talk about each of the two types. I can have some fibers, some of these types of axons, that don't have any myelin whatsoever. We call them unmyelinated. They appear gray. So we hear about talking about gray matter, like in the brain, they're referring to unmyelinated types of fibers. Typically they're short, so I don't worry about losing signal, I'm talking about interfering, but it can be interfered with, so you can, gray matter can be disrupted and cause problems to it if it gets damaged. Uh, electrical impulses can, can cause them to basically be short-circuited, as people have done that before with trying to affect the way the brain works. The myelinated fibers are going to be white, so you have gray matter and white matter. Those two, one's insulated, one's not. They have different functions, different features to how they work for speed and for basically our signal strength. This shows you a picture of a typical neuron. These are dendrites, cell body. Here is your axon. You'll notice there's layers of these myelin sheaths with the nodes of Ron VA. The Schwann cells here actually form the, the myelin around each of these different ones and form the layers around it. Different types of neurons, because they fall in different categories based on what they do. They fall in a couple different ways. One is structural, the other one is going to be how they function. So the structural types, the first one's called multipolar. As the name implies, it has more than one pole. It's going to look like this. It's called multipolar because you have multiple different dendrites and then one axon. So you can receive lots of information from lots of places and then send it forward. Bipolar, as the name implies, has two poles. You basically have one axon, one dendrite with a bunch of little branches off of it, and then one axon. So it's pretty straightforward that way. There's still the cell body in the middle. 
And then unipolar has just one branching fiber with the cell body off the side. So the dendrite really goes straight into the axon and doesn't even go through the cell body which sits off the side. Obviously fairly quick, but it does lose a little bit of its ability to process things this way. The functional type, based on what they do, you have sensory neurons, because their job is to detect information of their environment and then pass it forward. So they are also called afferent. They are typically unipolar in structure. Makes sense. I want to just grab that information and send it straight forward. I don't really care about processing it or worrying about multiple signals. I just want to get the information and move forward. Association neurons, because they associate things, are called interneurons because they go between the two main types of neurons. They're going to take information from the sensory and move it on to the other types. They're usually multipolar. It makes sense. I'm getting a lot of information from lots of sources. I can condense it down and send it forward. And the third type are called motor neurons because their job is to call it the efferent because they cause an effect. They're usually also multipolar as well. So these guys receive information, send it to these guys, these guys kind of relay it around to where it's supposed to go, and then these guys send it back to the things that are necessary to do the job. Send it to a muscle, send it to a gland, tell it to do a job. They're going to basically route it around. So the process works like that. You're going to end up picking up information, carrying it back, the inner neurons are going to transfer it over, and then the motor neurons are going to send it back in order for the task to be completed. It forms an arc, a little sort of reaction arc here in order to make this work. 